Chubb is a insurance company out of Germany that Warren Buffett and his storied, his famed Berkshire Hathaway has been buying for two quarters. They specifically asked for permission to not disclose that they were purchasing this asset. And the asset is up 9.76% since they started purchasing it. Obviously, this is not something that I'm not buying. This is something I'm doing the absolute opposite with. Hey, this is not financial advice. We are not financial advisors. You do not have to follow our trades. This is just something that I am interested in doing. And let me tell you why. One, Warren Buffett's in it, and he's in it so much that it's his fourth largest holding right now. I don't know if you guys have paid attention over the past 80 years, but when he buys something and he buys a lot of it, it has a tendency to do well. Two, they actually make money. They make oodles and noodles of cash. And I love a good company that is actually making cash, that is actually doing responsible things with that money and making good management decisions. That's the next thing. The CEO is an absolutely incredible CEO who is, let's, let's face it, he is old money. His father was a CEO of an insurance company before him, and he has followed in his footsteps beautifully and has built this company into something worth gajillions. It's, it's just billions, but it feels like gajillions of dollars. And I want to be involved in it. Let me break down a little bit more as to why I'm interested. This first article just goes over the fact that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway revealed that the confidential asset they've been buying for the past two quarters has been Chubb. They bought 26 million shares of it. That's not, that's, uh, that, that's, uh, this isn't patty cake. This is the big leagues. That's, that's, that's an incredible amount. It's $6.7 billion worth of equity. Um, it's there. I'm oh, sorry. I said it's the fourth. It's the ninth business holding. Uh, and it's, 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 it's absolutely insane. I believe that the fourth biggest holder of stock, they have a lot of pushing power within this particular asset. The stock's gained roughly 12%. Uh, to date, it's a lot of money. Uh, there, they were previously Chubb was previously a couple of different companies, uh, insurance, and Ace Limiter, uh, Ace Limited went ahead and purchased them a few years back in 2016 for 29.6 billion, and just took on the name Chubb because it had so much of a prestige to it. Uh, it's it's a very 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 impressive equity when you're actually looking at the kind of money. That they're able to bring in as well. Looking directly at the financials from Chubb's website, just so you know, although the equity has been kept secret, it's it's no secret that the equity is performing well. This is Chubb's website. Anyone can go to it. You can just look at their investor earnings and just go ahead and click on the press release for what Q1 looked like. When you click on that, you get a PDF, and this PDF breaks down just exactly how much oodles and noodles of cash is. Whenever I say oodles and noodles of cash, this is what I'm talking about. 15%. They're up 15% and 22% res respectively when talking about net income and core operating income. That's preposterous. This isn't a tech company, guys. This is an insurance business. And so they're up. Net income was $2.14 billion, up 13.3%. And core operating income was $2.22 billion, up 20.3%. Net income and cooperating income were impacted modestly by two one-time items, incremental deferred tax benefit, 55 million, related to the Bermuda tax law enacted back in December, 2023. And uh, it's partially offset by some charitable donations, but the, these big numbers, this fantastic performance is a massive deal. Uh, back in March of this year, they reported net income for the quarter right around that $2.14 billion range. This is really, really, really impressive, especially when you're looking at how they performed in years past, looking at their annual performance. Just five, six years ago, their annual performance was just a couple of billion dollars. So the fact that they're producing numbers now that are $2.4 billion, whereas previously for a year, it was $2.14 billion. That's incredibly impressive. And that is massive growth over a very short period of time. But it's responsible growth. Let's look at the chart. We're actually looking at the chart and where we are. We have continually found strength year after year, push after push, from its most recent aggressive low back here in June of 2023. This, that's right. It hasn't even been a year since it's low here. If you look at the performance from that period to now, we're talking about gains of 38.66%. 
This is reasonable. Guys, this isn't 120%. This isn't 500% gains. This is really sustainable. We did just have this beautiful pullback down here. I would love to have told you about it in April. I wasn't on my scanners. It wasn't on most people's scanners. All this news is breaking. This is stuff that Warren Buffett was talking about just yesterday. CNBC just broke the news yesterday on this asset. So we didn't, we weren't prepared for this kind of news. But when you look at the chart and you see where we are, we popped quite nicely off of our low from April 24th. And it seems like we're beginning to find a lot of strength up here around this $252 level. These 250s are incredibly valuable. Why do I say that? Well, look at how it's responded to VWAP. We pushed through VWAP, found a little bit of weak sellers, formed the doji, pushed continually higher. And now we found three days that are inside bars relative to the outside bars, the engulfing candles that we've had to the upside. So this is something that I'm looking to start uh, building positions into rather soon. As long as I can find some strength at today's uh, market open, I think I'm definitely going to be interested in starting to find some opportunities to get involved in this thing and continually allow it to push higher. Now, this is a financial asset, right? When you look at financials, another thing to consider is the seasonality of financials. You have to understand when we're looking at markets and the performance of markets, there are certain things that perform well in times of uncertainty and certain things that perform well in times of plenty and certainty. As of late, we've seen assets like Chubb perform well. We've seen assets like uh, JP Morgan Chase perform well. Uh, so if we look at one of those assets, for example, we've seen JP Morgan Chase perform well. We've seen other banks like Schwab perform well, even after the crazy banking crisis that we talked about just a few months ago. Why are they performing well? Well, financials, financial companies, they have a tendency to make money. And in an environment where it's very expensive to loan money, you want to be putting your cash, investors want to be putting their hard earned dollars and cents in assets that are actually able to produce day after day, time after time in these markets. So one of the reasons why I'm really liking this Chubb opportunity is the fact that not only is that particular equity performing well, but the whole of the financial sector is performing incredibly well. JP Morgan Chase is an old man stock. It's trading at highs right now. I was, I've been buying the stock for forever, not because I'm interested in the long-term growth of the bank. They pay a great dividend. But not only now am I benefiting from the dividend position that I have, I'm benefiting from the fact that they're performing so well, producing tons of money, and they're actually producing highs on their technical charts as well. So we're coming up with fundamental reasons why we could be buying this thing. We have technical reasons why we could be buying this thing. And lastly, we have seasonal reasons why we could be buying this thing. Look, I get it. I know what you're going to say, but Aaron, why is it that tech and financials are performing well. That's not normal. Usually we don't see those two holding things hand in hand. To that, I would say I totally agree. We're in a very unique situation where NVIDIA is leading the way. Uh, they're able to produce cr crazy amounts of cash and still be a really impressive growth stock and pull the NASDAQ up, pull the S&P up with their incredible performance. But to that, I have to respond. How comfortable are you? With that kind of volatility? That's the question. Are you putting every dime you have in your NVIDIA positions? I doubt it. So what are you doing instead? You should have some kind of asset like a chub, something that isn't necessarily super chubby. Um, I, I, know, I know the name. I know the name speaks volumes about it, right? But I do think that this thing, it has some real nice lean meat to it that we can bite into get our protein, get a very important piece of our diet and not have to focus so heavily on the really exciting stuff, the desserts, the sprinkles that are the NVIDIAs and the Metas and the Netflixes of the world, the assets that are incredibly volatile and could see so, us. So, so a couple things on this that are unique. And, 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 like, I had a couple thoughts because, so here's my insights as to why <clears> markets <throat> are sitting at the highs and financials are doing better. We had a recent a recent accelerated ex, uh, uh, 
like elevation in the interest rates that's going to perform well for financials financials that are the let's talk about the majors here in the u.s right because not all banks are the same the jp morgans of the world best to breed right they pay a dividend and they're going to be okay because they're heavily regulated by the federal government from the last banking crash so your majors here in the u.s much much safer than your than your uh your middle your middle tier banks that we saw that we saw that uh that little bit of a crisis when we had a couple banks close and the fed had to step in and and buy those assets up and what did jp morgan do well let me let me pick through your 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 uh your rubble oh yeah these are the assets I, i'm gonna cherry pick these i'll pay you a boatload of money and then off we off we go to the races so the changes are at a discount. And so the majors are really well positioned in this. The other thing is the A, I mean, I, I hate to say it, but it's it's AI, right? If the AI catalyst wasn't there, the market wouldn't be performing in the way that it do, that it's doing right now. Companies already had a lot of money to invest in those. And so what we were talking about before with the narrow breadth of the market rally, right? Small caps aren't performing that well, but we're seeing the performance in those that have money and those that have money to invest in AI. You know, even Apple getting the pop on the news yesterday that they're talking about some improvements in there. And then we retested that $190 level, which was kind of my intuition last week when we were talking about Apple was we were going to test $190 level before we retested the 165 level, especially with the post earnings move and especially with the Worldwide Developers Conference coming up next month. So you look at that and that's why we're seeing the performance in my eyes in these markets in both the financials and uh, the uh, the tech market because there are catalysts that are driving both of those things <clears throat> higher, even though we've typically been trained to say, well, there should be an inverse correlation, right? If it's cheaper to borrow, financials don't do as well and and uh, tech does well. And if uh, it's harder to borrow, then we need to go to financials because they're going to make more money and tech doesn't perform as well. But those two ha things have been moving hand in hand because of those specific catalysts. Are they related to each other? No. Are they happening at the same time? Yes. And so that's the difference between this market and markets that we've seen in the past. Now, once we price in all of this action in terms of AI, all of once these companies have made their uh, their investments, they start to report profits on AI, they start to kind of say, okay, this is where we're at with AI at this point, right? Then we'll start to see an evening out and then we'll see a softening in those things and the market waiting on the next catalyst. It's not happened yet because companies are still, we haven't even begun to monetize AI. We haven't even begun to monetize it in a major way. We're still building the infrastructure and we're still figuring out what we're going to do with AI, how it's going to leverage, increase, in, uh, increase our productivity uh, as humans and, and how we're going to work with this and these relationships that are going to go back and forth. So that's a little bit different than the uh the the historical precedents that we've seen in these markets that's my opinion on it and that makes sense but sometimes you have to notice again look at the relationships and see what's happening from one to the other and make sure that you're trading on the right side of it even if you don't believe it you have to take your bias to the door because you're going to miss out on profits and it, it, the, the market's like a game of musical chairs right you don't want to be the one left without a seat once the music stops hey, amen I, I mean there's there's so many good, so many good nuggets in there. But I do believe in my heart of hearts that there are some assets where we're playing musical chairs and the music has long stopped and yet we're still buying it. I feel that way about gold. I don't feel that way about something like a chub. I think these types of opportunities, they happen every day. We just have to take the time to really start to research them and to find them and to find things that work well for our risk profile something like a chub it's not the sexiest thing in the world right this is not the red panty night that a lot of people are looking for and they're starting to buy things in their portfolios this is something that is more of a long-term play when we're talking about warren buffett buying into something everything that he's bought now i shouldn't say that 90 percent of the things that he's bought he's bought with the outlook of not a year not two not five but 10 years, um, 20 years, yeah. 30 years. This this kind of investment, this kind of opportunity is something I get into now so that my kids call it tuition is paid for. That's why I'm buying Chubb. Mm -hmm.